Well, when it comes to the WWE, one of the big ways they make news now is not with the talent and what the talent does on the shows that is good, or the booking or writing of the shows, how fans feel about great shows. It's about talents being released and drama and so forth. Well, yeah, that's modern WWE for you, no matter if Vince is in charge or not. And wasn't that too long ago, was it, that we had a controversy about the WWE and trying to really crack down on their contracted talent uh, going out there and using WWE's intellectual property, meaning their name and their likeness, on third-party platforms such as Twitch and YouTube. You know, they're trying to make additional money for themselves, which I don't begrudge them for, but certainly the WWE is always going to because at the end of the day, especially in a Vince McMahon administration, it's always about the WWE having to have final say in total and complete control. You know, we can go back many years to Zack Ryder. He struck out on his own and it was successful. And the company absolutely didn't like it because he did it on his own. So it didn't matter if it was successful or it worked, but it was because of the fact that they didn't control it. They had to crack down on that shit. They sent him a message, eventually took control of it and fucking ruined the shit. Big surprise. So we know that was a big hullabaloo back then about, you know, you can't just use the likeness, the intellectual property that is contractually owned, the rights to it owned by WWE, but there is some type of thing of, don't be so fucking retentive about it. Like, if somebody like an Adam Cole or somebody is using their WWE name for Twitch, like, tell them to give you a cut of it and let them keep the rest. It's not that big of a deal. As a company, you have to put nothing forth. You know, in terms of effort, really, let the talent do it. You get a little bit of a cutback, but it's yet another way to try and grow your brand. Like, to not want to do that is really idiotic, bad business, in my opinion. But, I think the WWE backed off on that. But now we got the big bomb dropping this week that Mandy Rose has been released from the company. She just finished up, and I think because of what happened and what came out and what was leaked, she just finished a 413-day run as NXT Women's Champion where she went to NXT and she really kind of like retooled herself and reinvented herself and worked at her craft and seemed like a lot of people were really into her and not just because of how she looked and her assets, if you will, the assets that frankly got her into the spot that she's in now. Um, but she spent over a year as the NXT Women's Champion, really one of the featured pieces and centerpiece talents of that NXT show. And she was fired this week as it got out that she was posing and posting for Naughty Girl content on the fan time site. I'm just going to call it Naughty Girl content. Maybe you think it's a good girl content. And, and I don't see what was so bad about it. And that's not just me being an old perv. No. Frankly, when you look at some of the shit that's posted on social media and Instagram and anything like that, the dental floss that some of these chicks are wearing anyways, how much fucking difference was it really? She showed her ass cheeks. Well, most of the times, her and others are showing most of their ass cheeks anyways. Like, how much different fundamentally is it really? Oh, we see her butt crack now. That's where it draws the line. But if you see the entirety of the cheeks, but you don't see the full crack because there's a little bit of like a fucking V-string or fucking bomb bikini there. A Brazilian panty or something like that. Now all of a sudden, it's crossed the line. Unfucking believable now, there's been conflicting information that I've seen about uh, what the WWE knew and when, and when she may have been, whether she may have been told about it before, a couple months back in like August, like, hey, you got to cut this shit out, stop doing this. You know, this is against the terms of your contract, we're giving you a chance, like, you need to stop it. Like, don't know, like, what to believe or what not there, frankly. Um, but you also see some reports, there were a couple conflicting reports, uh, it was FirstSports.com, it initially put out a report that, Mandy Rose's salary was about $150,000, which to me felt real, really low. Um, then later, it looks like they said her net worth was about $5 million and her contract was for about $500,000. I don't know if that's right or not. Uh, probably somewhere in the middle. Like, it's hard for me to really say, but one hundred fifty feels a little low, even for an NXT talent like Mandy Rose on WWE. It wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility, but somewhere between two hundred fifty to 500000 feels probably closer to the right amount. Don't know. 
because we don't always get all the specifics of these contracts because there isn't a wrestler's union to put all that information out in the public for consumption. And, and it comes down to this for me with Mandy Rose. Pardon me, ask, how stupid could you be to fumble your national television six-figure spot bag like that? How fucking stupid are you? Is this just Mandy Rose being reckless, greedy, just thinking that she was above it all? She's that dumb? I'd like to think not, but this certainly doesn't feel like the most well-thought-out decision. This is an example of Mandy, like, deep down being bored, or maybe she's trying to get attention in a different way. She's trying to set up some type of post-WWE career, go into business for herself. Could also be possible, may not be. Is this an example of WWE money not going as far, not being nearly as much as they might like to believe or think it to be? I think there could be an element of that, because even if you said, for example, that Mandy Rose is making 250000 that sounds great until you realize all the money that she's got to pay out in terms of travel expenses, right? Like getting to venues, talking about potentially hotels. You're talking about other expenses that come along with being a wrestler, like your tax rates higher. You got to figure out how to get insurance coverage on your own because, you know, you're not an employee of WWE as a wrestler. You're an independent contractor. So they say, they don't give a fuck about you with any of that important like person stuff. It benefits my ass. You know, like there's a higher cost of maintenance for the gear and the upkeep and the maintenance, especially when you're a decent looking woman like Mandy Rose. Like you got to invest in that. You got to invest in your ring gear. You got to invest in a number of things. Like there is certainly a cost associated with being a performer like that. So it's probably true to some degree that that money doesn't go nearly as far as people might think that it does. Makes total sense to me. There is a piece to me as well thinking that if WWE was paying their talent what they should, crap like this wouldn't happen. And while I fully acknowledge wrestling is not nearly as popular as it once was, it just isn't. Like live event attendance isn't what it once was. Television ratings certainly aren't what they once were. Pay-per-view buys certainly aren't what they once were. Like you can go on and on and on with all this. But the reality is, is that a company like WWE still makes a shit ton of money. Even with that decreased domestic following. And when you think about somebody like a Mandy Rose, who a lot of times would be on a show that's got like 600, 700,000 viewers that she might be on for 10, 15, 20 minutes a stretch every week. And this is not just for like a two or three month season. You're talking about nine to 12 months out of the year. You know, when you probably compare that to other television stars or television actors and the salaries that they get per episode, you know, these WWE talents are significantly underpaid. And shame on them for not realizing that, not doing better about that. And they are. Wrestlers are a vastly underpaid talent pool. When thinking about national television and their scope and their viewership levels and their impact, they're absolutely, especially with the risk associated with what they do. You can't sit there and just say, well, Mandy Rose is just a beautiful face with a great body. Like, she is also in the ring doing shit that could put her body at risk. Like, you get, you get what I mean? WWE is fucking significantly underpaying the talent. They know goddamn good and well they are. And let's also be clear here. The WWE was probably entirely within their legal rights to release Mandy Rose for this. They were. I mean, you have to like it. But especially if she's going on a site like Fan Time, and they have some type of morals clause or some type of like behavior clause... And also talking about the intellectual property and using the name Mandy Rose would definitely be an intellectual property that belongs to WWE at the time that she's under contract with WWE. She's using the WWE associated Mandy Rose name, likeness, and intellectual property to basically sell video and pictures of her ass and her nips. Yeah, that's a problem. Especially if we can assume that she didn't get company approval to do this first. And it stands to reason that she probably did it. So you're probably seeing a lot of people making villains of the WWE out of this in some respects. And the reality is, is that when you look at it from a WWE perspective, they were well within their rights to do so here. However, while I acknowledge that they were well within their rights to do it, and I acknowledge that part of what might push these some of these ladies to do things like this is because the wrestling money from WWE doesn't go nearly as far as people like to think that it does. 
wrestling talent is underpaid and all of that, I come back to this simple question. Was it really worth firing Mandy Rose for this? Was it really? Was that really a good decision for business? Was this sending a really good message to your locker room? Maybe you could convince me that they were, but I doubt it. You've invested years of television time and creative resources into the Mandy Rose character. She's one of your most valuable commodities for your NXT brand. And while, yes, the NXT brand is currently third on the pecking order in the priority chart, you know, it's still a standalone two hours a week, right, national television show. So it's not insignificant in the grand scheme of things. It's something that fits into your overall cable television package. It's a part of the revenue pie. And she's one of the most valuable commodities, one of the most valuable talents that you have currently for that brand. And you have to wonder, did you overstep here by creating more buzz and controversy on the negative side by releasing her than if you would have just ignored it and let the shit blow over in a couple days, which inevitably it would have, because wrestling fans have the attention spans of what we were even talking about. It probably would have been better you just let the shit blow over. You really think shareholders are going to be that bothered by her showing tits and nips and ass on fucking fan time? Give me a break. Would you have been better off just suspending her for 60 or 90 days and giving her an edict and saying, take this shit down or it's gone and you're gone? Maybe. It certainly feels right. And maybe you could say that they did tell her, like, take this down or you're gone. And she said, I'm not going to take it down because <laughs> she probably felt they were going to fire her anyways. So she said, I'm going to keep it up. And they said, okay, you're gone. And maybe there's a piece of, she realized, shit, I could make as much or more money doing this as I can wrestling. And it, I'm not doing anything, anything too incredibly provocative. Because how much different is this really from anything I would post on an Instagram or Twitter or anything else like that? And that is, again, a fair question to ask. It's a shame it got to this point. I don't know who we really make as the bad guy or bad gal here. Like Mandy Rose should know if you're using the WWE issue name, their intellectual property to do this shit, that's probably going to get you into some hot water. And you shouldn't be freaking surprised when they've got a problem with it. So she's not totally innocent here, so let's stop acting like she is. For the WWE. You know, you'll let accused sexual assaulters and accused rapist, alleged rapist, work there without any problems. But if you're a woman and you show your ass or you show your nips, that's where you draw the fucking line. I say, you probably could have let this one blow over. Suspend her for a little while. Let it go. Let it go. And the reports of Matt Bloom, the A-Train, being a snitch, that honestly sounds and looks about fucking right, doesn't it? He looks like he would be a fucking snitch-ass stooge. Seriously. So if that's true, I would totally believe it, if that report is true. Yeah, he was sitting there talking to Shawn Michaels about the content that there, because he's probably fucking a subscriber. This whack ass. Yeah. Like, everybody kind of looks stupid in this case. And it's a shame, too. She invested a lot of time in Mandy Rose. And she had developed, and she had worked on her craft, and she had become good. So it's a shame to see all of this investment be for naught. Because of some NSFW fucking pictures and videos. I don't know, man. Just feels like another example of why wrestling is so lame now. Because this is the type of crap that will get you released from your contract. Good lord.